Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In today's video I'm going to take a look at Pattern Along Path. There's two different versions we can use. We can use the one in Extensions, which allows us to use colour and groups of objects, or we can use the Live Path effect, which uses a single path. I'm going to show you how to use both and the pros and cons. Stick with us. To demonstrate Pattern Along Path, I'm going to be using the logo that we created last time. If you'd like to see how to create this Turtle logo, then click on the link above and watch the video. This logo, at the moment, is just a single path. It's a composite path made up of all these individual uh, subpaths. For extensions, we can use groups of objects. So we can colour each of the sections individually, group them together, and then we can use that group of objects to create our Pattern Along Path. With the Live Path Effects version of Pattern Along Path, you can only use a single path. So we have to union all the sections together and use it as a single path. Using this method, we can only create the one colour. But it does have quite a few benefits over the Extensions version. So let's take a look at Extensions. So I've just opened up a new document and I've pasted in a copy of our logo. Like I said before, extensions, we can use groups of objects. So what we can do is we can break our logo apart. So if we come up to path, down to break apart, and split it into the individual sections, we can then just come in and color the individual sections as we want them. So we just color all of them. And then we come in and color individual sections. We give them a multicolored shell, I think, just for So now we've coloured each of the elements of our logo, we need to group them together. So if we drag a box over the whole lot, then we can come up to group and group them all together. So now we can use this to create our pattern along a path. So I'm just going to press Control D to duplicate it. I'm then going to hold down Control and just shrink down our copy. We can move it over to the side. So what we need now is a couple of paths. To create our paths, I'm going to use the ellipse tool and just drag out an ellipse. If we turn off the fill color and I'm going to get my Bezier tool, we just create a path that way. This one, I'm just going to come in, get the nodes tool, and then we can just give this a little bit of shape. That's a bit nicer. With the extensions um, version, we do have to make sure that our skeleton paths are actually paths. At the moment, if we click onto our ellipse, sorry, we get the nodes tool, it's still a predefined shape. You can tell that by the two square nodes and the little circular node. So what we need to do is we need to come up to path, down to object to path, and that converts it to a path. So now you can see we've got our four uh, nodes around the outside. When using the extensions version of pattern along path, we need to make sure that the pattern is above our skeleton path. So to do this, I'm just going to grab the selection tool and with our ellipse selected, I'm just going to drop that to the bottom so we know that the pattern is above the path. I'm then going to hold down shift, select the pattern. Then we can come up to extensions down to generate from path and down to pattern along path. This brings up our little set of options. So in here, we've got uh, copies of the pattern. We've got a, a selection of different options that we've got. We can use single. If we turn on down the bottom, we've got live preview. So if we turn on live preview, once it's thought about it, it should show us. So it may take a little bit of time. It's a little bit slow. So single just puts a single copy of our pattern on the path. If we have single stretched, this takes our pattern and stretches it right around the path with repeated. This repeats it as many times as it can to cover the path. So you can see over here we've got overlap. If we use repeated stretch, then it just adjusts the size of the turtles so they fit nice and evenly around the outside of our skeleton path. Another thing to note is when we use the extensions version it doesn't remove the skeleton path, the skeleton path still stays there and it just adds the pattern over the top. 
So there, the different um, copies of pattern, the different options we've got there. We've also got deformation type. So if we look at this, we've got snake or we've got ribbon. At the moment, we're on snake. Snake just sits our pattern perpendicular to the skeleton path, and it does that all the way around, so you get this nice effect. If we use ribbon, if we use ribbon, then it keeps our pattern vertical. So it kind of makes it look like we've got these turtles standing around in a ring holding hands. Space between copies. Let's go back to snake. So we've got space between copies, so we can add a bit of spacing between. Um, this is supposed to be in pixels, I believe, but we'll add 10 in here. But I'd say it looks closer to a percentage than, than pixels. So that adds our spacing between our gaps. We can add negative spacing if we want. So we get overlap. I turn that back to zero. We've got normal offset. A normal is line perpendicular to the skeleton path. So this is an offset that moves it perpendicular or at right angles to the skeleton path. So if we put in, we put in five there and you can see we've moved our turtles out a little bit because we're on repeated stretched it does stretch the turtles a little bit more just so their fins touch we can do the same again we can have negative and move them inwards and you can see we've moved in a little bit put that back to zero and we have tangential offset which just moves our pattern along our skeleton path so we could put in here so it's 20 and you can and it just moves our pattern along. So we get rid of that again, put that back to zero. The other options we've got here are pattern is vertical. This just turns our pattern around by 90 degrees. So if we click on this one, our turtle's now swimming around in a circle. And lastly, we have duplicate pattern before deformation. So if we turn this one off, we lose our original copy that's up here. So it's always nice to keep that on if you want to make sure that you've got that copy uh, remaining at the top. So with this version of Pattern Along Path, there are a couple of um, disadvantages. One is that we can't adjust our pattern live. So we can't twist this one round to turn all our turtles round. Um, we have to close this down click off, select our pattern, we can rotate our pattern, then we have to select both our paths again, come up to extensions, down to generate from path, down to pattern along path, put on the live preview, and now you can see our turtles have all turned slightly, mimicking what I've done with the original image here. Another big flaw with this version of Paddle Along Path. So if we apply this and zoom in a, a touch, we can see that we're starting to get some quite major distortion of our original pattern. It's actually not that bad on this one. In the past, I've had it a lot worse than this. This top flipper here has got a dent um, the back flipper here and tail are warped and the side of the shell is slowly warped here. This can be a lot more pronounced than this. This is quite mild from what I've seen in the past. Yeah, so they're, they're the main down points. It is nice to be add the colour, but as you'll see, we get much smoother results with the uh, live path effect. So that's extensions. Of course, we can if we zoom out a bit. We can do exactly the same with the path that we drew with our Bezier tool. Hold down shift, select the pattern, and then we can go to extensions, down to generate from path, and pattern along path. Live preview. And we get our pattern along the path. So it works exactly the same. So this time we're going to be using the live path effect version. With the live path effects version of pattern along path, we can only use a single path for our pattern. So what we're going to have to do is come up and select our pattern. We can ungroup it and then we're just going to come up to path and come down to union to union it all together to create one composite path. We can then 
right click and press copy. What we're doing there is we're putting a copy of our pattern onto the clipboard ready for use. We can then come over, select our ellipse, come up to path, down to path effects to open up our path effects dialog box. We can add a path effect by clicking on the plus at the bottom and we want pattern along path. So this brings up our options. Much of these options are the same as our previous example. So in here, we've got pattern source. We can edit on canvas, which I'll show you in a moment. We can uh, copy paths, we can paste paths, but we're gonna be using the link to path on clipboard. So if we click on this, so this brings up a live preview of our pattern along path. Again, the pattern takes on the characteristics of the skeleton path. So we've just got this white, white outline. If we wanted to color it the same, we can just click on our color down the bottom and add the color. We've got our pattern copies in here. We've got much the same. We've got repeated, uh, repeated stretched, single and single stretched. So if we go for repeated stretched, we can create our pattern that way. We've got width. Um, we can adjust this. Let's do it to so that this changes the width of our of our pattern. A nice way of doing this is if we come over and select our nodes tool, we get this little handle down here. And what we can do is adjust our our width more dynamically using this, and then we can see exactly what we're doing. Seems a bit jumpy, I think, probably because I've got all the patterns above. So we put that back to one for the time being. Down here we've got a button so we can change the width into units of the pattern length. We've got spacing, which again is spacing between our pattern elements, so we can space it that way. Again, you can do negative spacing if you like. Let's put that back to zero. We've got normal offset. So again, this is this is moving it perpendicular to the line of our uh, skeleton path. So we can stick five in there and it moves it in. You can put a negative amount and it moves it outwards. We've got tangential offset, which again is moving it around the path or moving it along the path. So if we put 10 in there, so as you can see, we put 20 and we get a bigger gap. So it's moved it along by the set distance from the start of the path and it forms a space. So that's just one to be aware of. Um, tangential offset, we've got offset, offset in unit of pattern size. So again, it's just changing the units we're working in. So what's happened is we've now moved it out um, five times the pattern size. That's why it's so far out now. We get rid of our offset, then we come back in and you can adjust, adjust it a little bit more controlled. We've got pattern is vertical. This does the same thing, just flips it around 90 degrees. And the final one down here is hide width knot. If we click on this, all it does is hide the handle that we had for adjusting the width of our pattern. We've got fuse nearby ends. If we just turn our pattern back around, we do a little bit of negative spacing. So minus one. Ah, sorry, we're in offsets in units of space. Let's get rid of that. So now we've just got a slight amount of overlap. I don't know if this is just a glitch on my computer or this is this is how it works. It doesn't. When I first came across this um, fuse nearby ends, I assumed it would assume uh, fuse fins. But if, as we increase this, I put it up to 10, you can see it starts to have this weird effect linking um, sections of our pattern. For me, this just seems a little bit strange. So I've got a feeling that's a glitch on my copy. If you did want to link the fins together, what we can do is we can come up to path, object to path, which has created a path. We can then come up to path union and it unions together our sections. So if we change the stroke width, you can see that we union together on the flippers. And as I said, this one, when we use this, this version of the pattern along path, the results are much cleaner. We haven't got any distortion in the tail flippers. The tail's nice and neat. 
our shell stays a nice smooth shape. We don't get any distortion in the head. We get the stretching, but it, it does it in a much cleaner uh, manner than the extensions version. And much the same as our previous example, we can select the curve that we created with our Bezier tool. We can add a path effect, pattern the long path, get our options. We can link to pattern in clipboard. We can change this to repeated stretched. Again, it's taken on the elements of the skeleton path. So if we want to color it, we can just color it. I say we can edit it much the same. So we can select our original pattern. We can rotate our original pattern and rotate our turtles. We can scale our original pattern and scale our turtles. Yeah, I think we can deform our all the adjustments we make to this one follow through onto the turtles that we've got on our path. So this gives us a lot, a lot more control over how we're doing our pattern. We can see exactly what we're doing. When we use the extensions version, we have to come out, adjust our turtle, then go back in to re reapply it. This way we can adjust it live. So that's the two options that we got available to us. I personally think that the pattern along path gives a much cleaner version of the pattern. It's a bit unfortunate we can't use multiple colours like we can with the extensions, but uh, yeah, whichever one takes your fancy, you can have a play with both. Hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.